radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the masses. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Today's Tuesday, July 12, 2022. It was a big day today, wasn't it? It's going to be a great show. Let's do this, man. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and Unex Networks. Ray's Hobbs, I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? All right. Big show tonight. We welcome very special guest, Scott Walter. Scott Walter is back with this. One of my favorite guests. One of my first guests. <laughs> tonight, night two of Secrets. It's Secret America tonight with Scott Walter. Tomorrow night, Kelly Sullivan Walden is with us. For the Secrets of Dreams, that is tomorrow night. And Thursday is another Fader Night with open lines all night long. Now, coming up, coming up on Tuesday night, August 16th, in about a month, I will be at UPARS here in Los Angeles in Studio City. You can go to upars.com and uh, check out tickets and information for that and... uh uh, I will be speaking. UPARS is back after uh, almost two years, uh, just like everybody else, right? Uh, UPARS is back, so I'll see you guys there live and in person. We will be broadcasting Fade to Black from there. Um, so that's cool, right? Um, and I'm going to have some special guest with me. Um, I'm going to be speaking, but I want to you know, bring a little Fade to Black uh, to a live audience. Uh, we've done actual broadcast, the show from there. Uh, we've done that a couple of times over the years, and 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 those are great, but we're not going to be doing that. I'm actually going to be speaking, and uh, but I'm going to bring a, a, a couple of uh, friends up on the stage, and we'll do a little interview, and, and then we'll, uh, instead of taking calls, uh, you know, I'll set up a microphone, and we'll get the the uh the U pars group uh to come in and and ask questions and you know like phone calls so it's going to be great and i will see everybody there if you're going to if you live anywhere in or around los angeles come out to U pars it's great steve marillo wolf mccarran's going to be there you want to hang out with wolf so uh come come and hang out with us and hopefully rodney's going to be there yeah, he's probably listening right now, Rodney. <laughs> I don't know what Rodney did with without you pars for the last two years. But anyway, so that's uh, Tuesday night, August 16th. And uh, next up, I want everybody to go and get your free membership right now for the UnX Network. You can do it. Go to unxnetwork.com. 
and you will receive their monthly newsletter. You're going to get that. You're going to get blog access. You're going to get event notices. You're going to get a free digital copy of their quarterly magazine. And last night I did a, a, a time travel special event. It was a lot of fun, by the way. I really enjoyed doing it. And this month's issue of Unex Magazine is all about time travel. You're going to get that too. So go. It's free. Go and become a member right now over at the Unex Network. The link to do that is right below. All right. Now, um, I, I want to let everybody know. I built, um, I installed a, a, a home gym. I did. And uh, I, I, I think I've got the right equipment and all the stuff that you would expect to see in a, in a home gym. So I got all of that, set up a TV and, and things. And so uh, I've been complaining to my friends uh, over the last seven days. That's it. I'm, I'm dedicated to, to getting back into shape. So I've been doing this an hour a day. And this morning I walked in there. And I went, man, it smells ripe. <laughs> I was like, ah. So you know what I did? I went and grabbed my Eden Pure Thunderstorm and, and plugged it in and put it into the home gym and walked back in there about an hour later fresh. I couldn't believe what what it smelled like before it it smelled ripe you know and you don't notice it when you're in there you got to leave you know for 24 hours and then walk back in and you're like oh man uh you know that that workout sweat dirty socks smell it's all gone the eden pure thunderstorm and right now they have their bogo special going on this week it's two for one and buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free right now. Free shipping. The links are below. Make it simple. Go. You buy two, you get two free. You buy five, you get five free. It's that simple. BOGO. Buy one, get one free. The promo code is Fader BOGO. And after what I discovered today, and I already knew because I've got this one running here. You know, and I've got one in my car. I took the one from the kitchen and put it into the uh, uh, into the home gym, and immediately ordered two more. I need two more. That's it. You've got to check it out. This air purifier works. Kills germs. Kills viruses. Smells great. It's quiet. USB. Or you can plug it into the wall right there. And uh, I use the USB version of for it because it's easy. The one in the home gym, plugged in the wall. It's right there. It's plugged into the wall. You don't, you don't even hear it. It's not interrupting my stranger things uh, when I work out. Buy one, get one free right now. The links are below. All right. I, I need to share that with you because I cannot believe how quickly it eliminated. Now I can bring somebody in there and show them the home gym. I would, if I would have known that's the way it was smelling before, Woof. but it's fixed thunderstorm. Okay. All right. Everything, all of our sponsors are in the description box below. You can follow me on Twitter at J church radio. The sandbox is hashtag F 2 B on Twitter. It's live right here. There's Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann, one minute ago, go to hashtag F2B, the sandbox right there. It's live in front of me. All right. Um, somebody just uh, said, hey, Church, you're back on Facebook. I thought we always were on Facebook. And uh, it turned out, I got this weird notice today. You need to, uh, uh, it's like, what? And it, And so there you go. <laughs> I didn't know. We're on all of these, you know, we're, we're streaming out, you know, KUNX and, and, and YouTube and these things and Twitch and whatever. And, and I just, I can't check all that stuff. I thought it was all done automatically. So I guess we're back on Facebook tonight. I didn't know how long we were gone. So if you're over on Facebook, what's up? 
Okay, let's get to the breaking news. Today was a big day. We've been doing the countdown because today NASA did their James Webb live presentation. All of that went down earlier today, and it did not disappoint. I was blown away. I expected to be blown away, but man, man, man. The collection, if you head over to the NASA website, uh, the images are available for download. You can go and do that. Each one, each image is like a feature-length movie. You can just talk about it forever and just look at it, and just it's mind-blowing. But also, today's live stream included Webb's study of the giant gas planet WASP-96b. WASP-96b, which is the most detailed spectrum of an exoplanet ever to happen, at least to date. We're going to see more of this action. But uh, WASP-96b was discovered in 2014. It's located about uh, 1,150 light years away from Earth. It has the mass of Jupiter and half the mass of Jupiter and completes its orbit around its star, Every three and a half days. Think about that. We do 365 days. Three and a half days. Right right around the star. But Webb's spectrum includes the distinct signature of water, along with evidence for clouds and haze in the atmosphere surrounding a hot, puffy gas giant planet orbiting a distant sun-like star. And I cannot wait for the analysis of these other exoplanets coming in from the James Webb. The the images were just stunning. So head over to nasa.gov and check out the images if you haven't already seen them yourself. It's a great presentation. More to follow tomorrow. All right. An Oklahoma man says Bigfoot made him kill his fishing partner, Larry Sanders, right? Not that Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders, 53 years old, stands charged with first-degree murder after allegedly admitting to uh, 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 admitting to everything first. Then he was charged. He killed a family member. And later to police to killing his fishing partner, Jimmy Knighton, who Sanders claimed wanted him dead by the hand of Bigfoot. The local sheriff, John Christian, said that Sanders' statement was that Mr. Knighton had summoned Bigfoot to come and kill him, and that's why he had to kill Mr. Knighton. It's an incredible story. Well, he's already admitted to it. He's been charged. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'll keep you posted. Twitter. Today, made good on its promise to drag Elon Musk into court and potentially force the Tesla CEO to acquire the social media company, despite Musk saying he is killing the deal. Today, Twitter filed a lawsuit in Delaware Chancery Court, the country's uh, preeminent business dispute forum, asking for one of its chancellors to compel Musk to buy the company, as he promised in his April 25th merger agreement. Under the terms of the accord, Musk agreed to purchase the company's outstanding common stock at $54.20 per share, or $44 billion. It's now trading at around $34 a share. That's right. Check this out. Twitter is asking for the court for a swift action to force Musk to buy Twitter, noting that the CEO's tactics pose the danger of irreparable harm against the social media company and its employees. It's lost over 30% of its value. And it's, it's sinking. And I've got more Elon news. Yesterday... An explosion occurred at the launch pad during a test of the Starship SpaceX rocket prototype. The company is assessing the damage, and company CEO Elon Musk tweeted today 
it's actually not good, end quote. Last year, SpaceX won a $3 billion NASA contract to use Starship for returning astronauts to the surface of the moon for the first time in five decades. There you go. All right. You remember Meta, the company, right? It used to be Facebook, or is it still Facebook? Meta now owns Facebook. I don't know how it's broken up, but listen to this. Meta, this week, launched a new artificial intelligence model, and it's called Sphere, which is designed to automatically verify, are you ready? Wikipedia. (laughs) Sphere's knowledge base comes from 134 million web pages. Meta said that it is not partnering with Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia, the nonprofit organization that owns Wikipedia.com on this project, but it's still in the research phase and is not being used to push live updates on Wikipedia yet. However, Wikipedia announced recently that it was using Meta's technology in its content translation tool. AI is going to control the data that you read on Wikipedia. That's 1984. That's George Orwell. That's nuts. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. Let's get this show cracking. On this day in history, 1933, the first three-wheeled, multi-directional, Dymaxian car designed by architect, engineer, and philosopher Buckminster Fuller is manufactured in Bridgeport, Connecticut. One of the coolest-looking cars ever in the history of automobiledom. Incredible. Buck. And you know what? The thing is, when you go look at the domes and, and his architecture, and of course, his quotes and his his philosophy. Great engineer, but he's got the coolest name ever: Buckminster Fuller, the Dime Maxim. All right, fader fact. All right, so last night I did a lot of chatting, little flapping about Interstellar and uh, its director Christopher Nolan, who uh, uh, Tenet. Right, I, I love Christopher Nolan. So today I just wanted to do a fader fact on Interstellar and Christopher Nolan. So this is your fader fact. You ready? Here we go. For the cornfield, for that scene in Interstellar, director Christopher Nolan grew 500 acres of corn. Later... He sold that corn for profit. And that is your fader fact. All right. How you doing? Tonight, we welcome very special guest. Scott Walter is here uh, for ke- uh, the continuing of Secrets Week here on Fade to Black tonight. It's going to be Secret America. Tomorrow night, Kelly Sullivan Walden is with us for Secrets of Dreams. And Thursday is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. Let's see. Jason Preston says, hey, Jimmy Church Radio, I just finished the new studio, and this is the back wall. Not to mention River Moon Coffee. Let me see what you got here. And Ah, man, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. That uh, all of it meets my approval. Well done. How many? How many is that? So that's okay. I see that. Oh, he's got a faded. Is that a mug too? As well, you got a faded black mug back there. He's got the hat. Got it going on. Well done, Jason. Thank you, man. And uh, you know what? That's going to get a retweet. I just got to do this. This. Will always get a retweet. There you go. 
There you go, Jason. Bam. 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 River Moon Coffee. Rivermoonwellness.com. Fade to Black Blend. Best coffee in the world. <sighs> French press tonight. I was going to do a pour over. But uh, I thought, nah, I need to French press. I need two cups. Uh, it's Scott Walter. Tonight's a two, two, two cup show. So I've got to split that up. I see Scott just arrived in the green room and he thinks I can hear him right now. He can come in and interrupt, but no, that's, that's not going to happen. And <laughs> my man, um, rivermoonwellness.com, uh, fade to black blend and help support the show. Go and get the best coffee in the world. Get a grinder, get a French press like Scott. Scott only grinds. That's uh, what Janet says. He grinds his beans. He does. He does. He does a proper. And uh, now, I want to talk. Scott is here, and we're going to obviously uh, dive into the Georgia Guidestones um, in a few minutes. And so, but... But I want to say a few things that may not get discussed later. I mean, Scott's the guest. These are my thoughts. These are my thoughts. And um, I love this country. I do. I do. It's messed up right now, which makes me love it even more. It's kind of like, you know how you know how you women are, right, with a, with a boyfriend, and you're just like, ah, I can fix him. I can fix him. <laughs> That's the way I am with this country right now. You know, we, we can fix this thing. It's broke, but we're going to fix it and, and we'll come out better on the other side. It, it's just, you know, but this thing with the Georgia Guidestones kind of upset me. And, but it not be for the reasons that you may think. All right. Um, I was raised a certain way like most of you were in this country. And there are things that are instilled in us from a very young age. Freedom of speech, right? You are told this repeatedly. Freedom of the press, right? The right to bear arms, right? And uh, freedom of religion, right? And and we have made attempts at uh, equality all around. We're still working on that, but that's the way it is here. It's the way it's supposed to be. And, and because of that and the way that I was raised, honestly, really, seriously, I don't care about anybody's religion or lack of religion. It's none of my business. It's your business. Don't care about mine, right? Don't care about what I do. And I've got the most screwed up religious views of probably just about anybody in that I'm lost and confused. But that's me. So my religion is I'm confused, right? I'm the church of confusion. That's me. And everybody is entitled to that Freedom of speech, freedom of thought, right? And freedom of religion. And so when it comes to something like uh, the Georgia Guidestones and whatever's written on those stones, whatever, if you're going to pay for it, do you want to erect those? And uh, that's on you. I don't, it's none of my business. Public, not, whatever, private property, you, and you do what you want. That's what this country is about. I don't want people interfering with me and telling me how I can think, how I should walk, how I should dress. That's the truth. So when it comes to the Georgia Guidestones, and I posted um, uh, the breaking news, and I was watching the comments come through um, about these different, whether in opinions, an opinion, but if you're going to be talking about facts and you're going to say things 
about the Guidestones that aren't true, and number one, or two, say that they don't deserve to be there and that it's it's wrong and it's this and this. It's, I'm like, wait a minute here. Let's stop. Let's pump the brakes. I, it doesn't matter to me what's on those stones. It doesn't. And it shouldn't matter to anybody else. And if you choose to go and do something, who is to tell you that it's right or wrong? And if somebody comes and blows them up, then good riddance, right? They were satanic. They were this. They were that. I, man, I, it's, ah. It's none of your business. And that's the part that upsets me. I I want to make sure that whatever your views are, that you can have those views. Just as long as, you know, you're not hurting anybody. You're you're entitled to that, just like I am. So we really need to think about this. There we cannot we cannot get involved there is a reason the the founding fathers of and and mothers <laughs> of this country escaped all of the persecution and, and 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 personal freedoms that they were denied and they wanted to make sure that no matter who you are you were welcome here it doesn't matter believe in god cool don't believe in god doesn't matter right what, whatever the color of your skin, whatever, whoever you are, you are welcome here. This is a place where you can have freedom. And that's it. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It honestly doesn't. I don't care. I don't care how people dress. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they like. I don't care what they don't like. I don't care. I don't care. They are entitled to those thoughts. I am too, and so are you. And that's the problem with the Georgia Guidestones. It may not be what you think. It doesn't matter to me what they represent. It doesn't matter what is written on them. It doesn't. If I wanted to build the Georgia Guidestones and put them in my backyard or my own version of Stonehenge or my own megalithic monument and write on it what I want, that's that's on me. And I don't want anybody to tell me that I can't do it. That's wrong. And that's against the fundamental freedoms that we were made sure that we had here in this country. So think about that. Scott Walter is here tonight. And uh, I've calmed down uh, compared to uh, where I was a couple of days ago with the Georgia Guidestones. I've I've calmed down a little bit, and I'm able to talk about it in a more even keel. But man, 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 was I upset. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is here. Secret America. It's going to be one of those conversations. I'm going to see how many times I can interrupt Scott Walter tonight. Yeah. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer and Unex Networks, Race Hobbs. I'll be right back with our guest, Scott Walter, right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fate to black. 
The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Right now, Eden Pier is having their famous BOGO deal on thunderstorm air purifiers. One listener wrote, it makes a huge difference in our cat litter box stink. I just wish I waited for the BOGO deal. I need another one. Well, now's the time. BOGO is back, so when you buy one thunderstorm, you get one free. No matter how many you buy, you buy two, you get two free. You buy five, you get five free. The thunderstorm will completely eliminate any odor, even the worst like pets, cigarette smoke, urine, and cooking. Now is the time to order. Eden Pierce buy one, get one free sale is one week only. With over 265,000 thunderstorms sold and countless five-star reviews, you know it works. People are buying several for around the home and even as gifts. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com and use discount code FaderBogo. That's FaderBogo. F-A-D-E-R-B-O-G-O. Bogo is buy one, get one free. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Discount code FaderBogo. And as always, shipping is free. Do you have an interest in the paranormal? Then you'll love the UnXNetwork.com. The X is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural, strange, and mysterious, like UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, and so much more. From hosts like Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and Christina Gomez, visit the UnXNetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the X. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UNX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcasts. It's time. It's new. It's the X. X. Right now, the world couldn't be more chaotic. History shows us what gold does when the world goes crazy. It goes up in value. Right now, we're in unprecedented times. The pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against the hyperinflation that's happening right now. So what can you do to protect yourself? Call my friend Alan Johnson at United Gold Group. He's dedicated to helping people secure their retirement income. He'll help you with gold, with silver, and other precious metals and show you how to set up your own self-directed IRA. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership easy and affordable. There couldn't be a better time, so call now and get a silver American Eagle proof set with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534. Three, four, or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. Reach out to my friend, Alan Johnson. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to jimmychurchradio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is with us. And uh, I'm, I'm too busy chop chopping. I'm chop chopping. I'll get back to the chop chop. I just want to say bye bye, Dan. 
Scott is joining us tonight. We're going to be talking about his latest adventure. He's always out there doing it and blowing my mind. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to do a deep dive into our secret America. We're going to chat about the Georgia Guidestones. Everybody knows Scott's an author and he's the host of America Unearthed and has been the president of the American Word I Can't Say services since 1990. Petrographic. Say petrographic like five times and and get back to me. He's responsible for the independent petrographic analysis testing laboratory where the Kensington Rune Stone was brought for investigation back in 2000, 22 years ago. He's been the principal petro- petrographer <laughs> in more than 5,000 investigations. I do it every single time. And Scott's laughing. He's laughing. He does this on purpose, by the way. But uh, he's done his investigations throughout the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, including the evaluation of the fire damage concrete at the Pentagon following the attacks of September 11th, 2001. Both of his website, Hooks X, Hooked, that's it. I give up. HookedX.com. <laughs> and Scott Walter answers. Blogspot.com is right there throughout social media. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black. The one and only Scott Walter. Hey, Scott, um, I, I'm all uh, twisted around here. And, 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 and uh, you know, I'm all messed up. And see, here's the thing. Um, the fan knots love you. Um, and you're such a, a knowledgeable and respected guest. But you're also a friend of ours. And we just love having you on. And, and it's, it's just exciting. And... Um, I, I don't think, uh, you know, this is the truth too. We're going to be doing a show in 10 years and I'm going to go Petra. Pet, pet. <laughs> you you're not the only guy who struggles with these words. I mean, it took me a while, but after almost 40 years, I, I got it down, but, uh, but hooked X really. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I was watching you laugh. See, you know, and see, that's that's the part of having a good friendship. You can just laugh at watching me stumble. You know, no, no, no. no. It's, it's um, no, it, it is a, it's a great friendship, and um, I, I just have so many good memories, and I know that every time we do a show, we start off with a plan, and it always goes, you know, somewhere else, but it always is fun. It's always good, and. Um, I um I really appreciate being with you anytime live or live or like this. Yeah, you notice that too. Um, in that you and I always have a plan. <laughs> we advertise the plan, and the plan is five minutes of a three-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Before we, I don't know how you want to start, but I, I, you know, I've been sitting here for the last half hour, kind of going through my thread and getting caught up after a busy day. And I listened to you, uh, some people would say rant. I use the word rant because it's sort of self-deprecating. But at the same time, I don't know if you're like me, Jim, but you know, I, I, have, I have people who lean right and people who lean left that watch my shows and read my books and and support me. And I'm, I'm very careful about trying to be neutral. And I've done that for years and years, even though I'll be honest with you, I lean left. Um, but there are things about um, the rights positions that I can appreciate. But I, I got to tell you, the, the guide stones push me over the edge. And I said to myself, um, I have a platform, you know, I'm more than most people. And. I've been neutral, but this is it. Um, I, I don't like where we're going in this country. You said this, the same thing. And I was listening to what you said, and I agreed with everything you said. And um, I don't know how far we want to get into this, but I will tell you this. I have calmed down. And the weird thing was on, on Wednesday when the stones, you know, when it happened that early morning, and I woke up and I someone sent me a picture and I saw one of the stones had fallen, but I didn't know what it was in the background. They didn't explain anything. They just sent me a picture. And then when I found out what happened, I was pissed. And then I had a guy call me and I can't even tell you what his name was. His name was Michael. 
but he was down south and he wasn't far from where the George uh, the, the Guidestones were located. And he asked me if I would come on. And I, I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm busy, but I said, if you do it right now, I can do it. It was a bad idea, but it was a good idea because I was lit. And, and this guy started talking to me and things were, I didn't know that they had been completely torn down. He told me live as he read it. And I lost my shit. I did. I just went, what? And so we got into it and we started talking about social issues. We started talking about freedom of religion. Um, I'm a Freemason, okay? <laughs> Our country was founded by the tenets of Freemasonry. Virtually all of our founding fathers were Freemasons. They were also Knights Templar. They just didn't tell anyone, okay? So I know exactly what their intentions were. And the stuff that I see going on now, the things that people are talking about, this is what our country is about. No, hard stop, hard pass. You don't know what you're talking about. And that's why I feel like I have to step up. I have to clear the air. And you said it yourself. This is not a Christian nation. We have people in Congress right now that are teeing up a resolution to make Christianity our nation's religion. No, no. Our founding fathers would freeze. And, you know, again, you said it. You said it, Jimmy. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care if you're not religious. That is what our founding fathers envisioned. Freedom of religion. And there's a reason why right? Because they inherited the ideological um, history of what the Knights Templar experienced, right? This is an order that was put down by the Roman Catholic Church and the King of France, a monarchy, right? And what happens historically, and it's happened many times, the two come together and they elevate themselves above the people, and that's when all the problems uh, start. And so you've got these two entities that basically came together, arrested, tortured, and burned these people. And then they set out when they went under the radar to eventually found um, what they called a free Templar state. They didn't know what was going to happen, but they put money aside for someday. And someday came in 1776. And the tenants that are in our constitution are based, are based largely on that experience. So if people would just take a step back and understand the history, because you know what happens when you don't learn from history? You repeat it. That's right. That's what's happening now. So I'm going to stop, but you got me lit up and I just had to say that. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> how many times... Uh, Scott, uh, did you get a chance to visit the Guidestones? I, I never. Uh, oh, OK, before you answer, yep, um, yep. just let me say this for 15 seconds. Um, if you want to go and do something, go and do it because it may not be there tomorrow. Right. And and I, it's, the Guidestones are kind of like that example. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully the, the Grand Canyon's always going to be there, right? <laughs> That's a pretty safe bet, Jimmy, I, I think. That's but Jimmy, you're, you're missing an even bigger point, right? You're absolutely right that we, if, if you want to go do something, you want to see something, go do it. Because not only is it possible that that thing you want to see is going to be changed or destroyed, or it's, it's never going to be the same for whatever reason, but you might not be here. You might not be able to go see those places. Life is short. And, um, you know, it's easy to sit there and talk about, well, I'm going to do this someday. Um, I'd say take a loan and die in debt. Go to those places and do it, right? Because you may not get another chance. And I don't want to be old laying in a bed, you know, about to die and go, God, I wish I would have done whatever. I do it because I, I live my life that way. I know that life can end. Uh, at any time and screw it, man, I'm doing it. That's right. That's right. Well, how many times did you get a chance to go out? Twice. And see guide twice. Stuff? Uh, once when we filmed the episode in 2013 and then um, Janet and I went a year and a half ago and you know, you know what I did is I had just bought a drone, you know, one of those MJI twos. MJI Phantom. 
no, it was, it was, it was like 800 bucks and I got the three battery pack. It was a thousand dollars. I will tell you right now, it was the best investment I have ever made. And I drilled the shit out of those guide stones. And now I went back and I've looked at that footage and it's like gold to me, man, because, um, you know, it, it, Jimmy, can I just do one quick thing? Sure. I, I think it's important because I've been on three different radio shows then talked about the guide zones and never once have I heard anybody talk about the context, okay, of why the stones were put up there. I mean, we can talk about the anonymous guy who did it. That's a whole nother interesting investigation. And we did that on the show. Um, I talked to the banker, Wyatt Martin, and, you know, my goal in the show was to try to get him to reveal the identity of this, you know, mysterious person. I knew he wasn't going to tell me, but um, and, and he knew I had to ask and, and, you know, it was TV, right? By the way, he just died last December. He was 91 years old, but anyway, um, the context, okay. The Georgia Guidestones were erected in March of 1980. Now, I don't know about you, Jim, but I was, I was, uh, in college at the time. And I remember distinctly that this was still the time of the cold war. People around the world were worried to death about nuclear war with Russia and, you know, what would happen, right? So the guide stones are exactly what they say. The whole context of the guide stones was if there is a nuclear war and if the human race survives, these are the guidelines for the survivors to consider for the next generation, if you will, of humanity. And if you stop and think about it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, right now we're at 8 billion people. We literally just, you know, um, tip the scales at 8 billion people on this planet. And anybody who doesn't think <laughs> that we don't have climate change, that we aren't, uh, we haven't uh, irreparably uh, polluted a lot of our waters and our aquifers, uh, fracking. I mean, all this stuff, right? We all, we've all, we all hear about it, but everybody just goes, gee, that's too bad. And nobody does anything, but we are headed in that direction where something bad's going to happen. And the whole idea was here is a guide if we survive. So the whole, the, and the thing that got everybody lit up and, you know, I would bet my bottom dollar right now, it was a religious zealot behind the bombing, but, um, <laughs> it, they, they say that, you know, we have to eradicate seven and a half billion people. Keep in mind in 1980, there were four billion people, right? We have doubled the population in a little over 40 years. So they were just saying that we have to keep our own population under control if we survive a nuclear event. So I think if you think about it in that way, <laughs> put it into perspective and think about it from that perspective. From, from that viewpoint, because those are the facts. The, the part, <clears throat> the part that, uh, that, that got me so uh, fired up um, is that, and, and I, you know, I said this at the beginning of the show, but, but I really mean this. If, um, if, if I expect to be able to live my life the way that I want to without having somebody telling me what to do and what not to do, right? Um, I expect that to come back to me, and that's the way that I project. Yeah. Right? It's really a very simple thing. Yeah. It's the right thing. Right. And 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 that's the way that I was raised. Well, when when the comments were coming in, oh, good on, you know, if if we suddenly um, that that it's OK to go around and just start blowing stuff up, you know, because of, of what religion. Right. Are we are we wait a minute here? To stop. That's where I draw the line. Hell yeah. I mean, completely draw the line. Um, I don't, 
um, whatever anybody's religious beliefs are, and they go on a certain day or night or whatever and get together and, and do their thing, that's on them. I, I'm not, I, you know what? I'm just not interested. I don't care. Right? I don't care what they're doing. Yeah. And and we shouldn't get into the mindset that suddenly it's okay to interfere or care about somebody's religious beliefs or thoughts or lack of religious beliefs. Right? That that that, that suddenly that this is a, a, a personal issue and that we need to go out and do something about it? No. No, that's right. I just, I, it's a, I, I have a blanket, Scott, a blanket wall. Yeah. Right. There. I mean, it's Hard just. Hard pass, man. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and, and think about, and think about this, Jim. Here's the other thing. And I don't want to get too, too wound up on this, but I, I feel it's important. You know, <clears throat> these people <laughs> are, well, let, let's just face it. A lot of these people are Roman Christian, right? Uh, the Catholic Church hates Freemasons. They do. I'm just going to tell you, they don't like us. And I'll tell you why they don't like us. The reason is when we take as, as a Freemason, when we take our obligation on an, on the altar, there is a Bible, there is a Torah, there is a Quran. Sometimes there's a Buddhist um, holy book. Native brothers take their obligation on an eagle feather. And the reason we do that is because whatever you call your God, your deity, your Yahweh, uh, Asherah, whatever, we're all talking about the same thing, right? It's the same thing. The great spirit, it's that thing up there, right? And what we promote in Freemasonry is that you can have a relationship with your God, whichever God, whatever you call it, however you venerate it, ritual, whatever. Like you said before we went on, that's your business, right? That's nobody else's business unless you want to make it somebody else's business. But the point is, is that you can have a direct relationship with deity all by yourself. The problem is, is when you have a human conduit in organized religion that gets in that in the middle. And that's where all the problems start. And frankly, what we promote in Freemasonry is... You don't need them. <laughs> and so that's why they don't like us. But the ironic thing is, this is dominantly Christianity that has taken this position, that they fear us and they don't like us. But yet they're the ones that are screaming right now that they should be able to do whatever they want, right? This is what our founding fathers want. Well, guess what? Those founding fathers are the same guys that you hate now they're the same guys back then. So think about the hypocrisy of that, right? That's right. I, I totally that. Am I missing something? No, you're not. You're not. You're not at all. And um, and to, to be honest, um, why does any of this matter? Why the frig are we having this conversation? It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I mean, it, doesn't make any sense. it doesn't make any sense. I, I thought we were all well past this. We were. And, we were, Jim. Yeah. I mean, look, let's go back to the 60s and 70s. I was just a kid. But remember, every you know, people seem to, to be getting along a lot better. And over the years, it's gotten worse and worse. But what's happened is, I'll tell you what's driven me crazy, is you have we have a Supreme Court in this country that is making decisions uh, telling the majority of the people to do something that they don't want to do, right? And, you know, <laughs> you know, over, overturning Roe v. Wade, these are the same people that were screaming about, you know, the pandemic. You can't tell me to get a vaccine. It's my body. It's my choice. But yet right. these are the same people that want to tell women what to do with their bodies That's right. and, you know, everybody else what to do. But boy, don't tell them what to do. And that's yeah. what I'm hearing. And 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 this this is effed up, man. And, and it is, this, it is. this is it why is. we're this is why we're all crazy right now. Well, see, here's the deal. I don't do politics on the show, but I do the conspiracy of politics. And let me tell you what the conspiracy is in all of this, Scott. Okay, let's hear it. I'm gonna tell you right now. 
if men got pregnant, abortion would be. Yeah. be I mean, that's it. That's it. If men yeah. got pregnant, right? <laughs> Being serious. Oh, you hey, listen. To words. listen. Listen to my words. If I, men got I hear pregnant, abortion would not be an issue. That's that's it. I'm telling you, know. you how it is. And I'm a I'm a man. I'm just <laughs> telling you right now. Yeah. You know, no. it, it's it's just so funny. Men, men are a trip. Men are a trip. Men, <laughs> you know, it, it's so funny. Um, uh, you know, some of the greatest scientific minds, the greatest scientific minds, uh, you know, they get together, these brilliant engineers, and they've got chemicals and chemistry and manufacturing equipment and they have a factory and they go you know what do we do with all this stuff i know breast implants <laughs> you know and, and and that's that's you know and that's 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 the way men think it's it's crazy it, it's 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 just nuts. Yeah. And I only say this because I'm a man, you know, and 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 I I, I can do these things. I can do these things, and I, you I, know, I, you know, I'm speaking the truth. You know, I'm speaking the truth. Yeah. It's, well, it's just the well, way. My position, my position has always been this. I, I don't know anybody who likes abortions. I don't like abortions. I think it's sad. I think it's it's tragic. But I always tell people, look, if you don't believe in it, you don't want one. Don't get one. That's your choice, but don't tell somebody else what they can do. I mean, that's just how I am. And yeah, yeah. And, and, and and yeah. us men, um, see, this is this is the conflicting thing uh, in in my head. Um, I'm not stupid, everybody. Just so, just just listen. <laughs> These are the conflictions that I have. I'm a dad, and nothing is more precious than a baby. Nothing. Nothing, right? But but on one side, um, absolutely, it, it's a it's a woman's choice. I've, I've I don't know what it's like to get pregnant. I don't know what it's like to think about that. And not only is it that, but there's other other factors that could come into play here. Uh, uh, you know that uh, besides uh, a loving couple. That could be an unloving situation. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get into that. But the point is this. So, yeah, freedom of choice. It's your body. I, I get that. Right? So there's that part. But then the other part says to me, but you're 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 ending the life of a of a baby. So suddenly my head is confused. Right, because I respect yeah. one side, then then I look at my daughters, and I think of that. Now I'm conflicted, but this is how I resolve it. Hmm. I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman. What do I know? Yeah. What do I know? I know that. Well, if 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 men got pregnant, I think we know the answer to this. I think we nobody, do too. Nobody would be telling us what to do with our bodies, but suddenly we're telling women that. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird, man. Yeah. You know, the the one thing I'm serious too. Um uh, uh you, you said earlier, you know, about divide and conquer and and splitting your audience and offending people and I try not to do that. Yeah. But and 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 I know that my audience is is men, women, uh, all colors, gay, straight, yeah. tall, Hell yeah. fat, short, yep. whatever. I've got everybody here, right, left, red, blue. I've got everything here, but we all get along and, and we recognize that. So I understand that part too. But if you really want to just upset, you know, like ruin the party, Start talking about abortion. <laughs> <laughs> ruin the party. Well, I, I, I'm not trying to ruin the party, but no, um, I did. I yeah, did. You know, no, and, no. Yeah, it, it's, I'm, I, it, you know, there comes a time when you just got to have certain conversations. And um, I'm like you, man. I, you know, I played a lot of sports. And, you know, I know that a lot of those guys that I played with, you know, they're, Politically, they're way over here. Some are way over here. I'm I'm more in the middle, but I'm definitely on that left left side of middle. And man, we went through some glorious times. And 
you know what it's like when you're in the middle of a battle, like a ball game. I mean, you guys, you fight like hell and you'll defend your teammate to the, to the end. Right. And it's, it's sad to see how you can, you can bond at, at such a, a deep emotional, almost spiritual level on one hand. And then when you start getting into these other things, how the division happens and, and that's why in Freemasonry, in Lodge, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion because we focus on the things that unite us, not what divides us. And it's a great rule. Um, and uh, I, I, I guess I should practice more of it. But lately, man, the, those the, the stones put me over the edge. I just got to tell you, I was um, to, for somebody to take it upon themselves and destroy something that they clearly didn't even understand is so tragic. Um, I just, I lost it and, and I'm just, I'm still sad, you know? Hey, Jimmy, here's a, here's a fact. Okay. This well, may actually, put in... actually uh, save that fact for after okay. the break. And, uh, let me get this in right now. This yeah, is, go ahead. I am your host, Jimmy Church tonight. Scott Walter is with us and, uh, spirited conversation. Yeah, all right. I love it. Scott Walter. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB. BX. Right now, Eden Pier is having their famous BOGO deal on thunderstorm air purifiers. One listener wrote, It makes a huge difference in our cat litter box stink. I just wish I waited for the BOGO deal. I need another one. Well, now's the time. BOGO is back, so when you buy one thunderstorm, you get one free. No matter how many you buy, you buy two, you get two free. You buy five, you get five free. The thunderstorm will completely eliminate any odor, even the worst like pets, cigarette smoke, urine, and cooking. Now is the time to order. Eden Pierce buy one, get one free sale is one week only. With over 265,000 thunderstorms sold and countless five-star reviews, you know it works. People are buying several for around the home and even as gifts. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com and use discount code FADERBOGO. That's FADERBOGO. F-A-D-E-R-B-O-G-O. BOGO is buy one, get one free. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Discount code FADERBOGO. And as always, shipping is free. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. 
Don't forget to use the promo code Jimmy at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code Jimmy. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Hello, I'm Katie, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. To Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official fade or not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Welcome back. Fade to Black, I am your host, Jimmy Church. It's hot, hot in here. <laughs> oh man oh geez and, and you know what's so funny uh, Scott, is we have managed somehow um to absolutely get red pilled and triggered over <laughs> anything it, it's so funny um i can uh it it's it's um it's like this and I, I I get affected by very little today, but I could I could do anything and say anything, and somebody's going to get triggered. I could literally say cheesecake. <laughs> what do you mean cheesecake? What do you mean Jimmy likes cheesecake? I'm out of here. It's just like, just, just, oh man, and and I, uh, my mindset, Scott, is I swear, enjoy life, do your no. thing, and and stay out of my way because I'm going to enjoy life and 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 do things my way. You know, and that's it. That's that's it. Ribeye steak with mushroom sauce. Oh. Mean mushrooms on your steak. Man, I thought church was different. I'm not like you, and you're not like me. And that's that's the beauty of it. Man. Hey, hey, Scott, we just went through the fourth of July. And again, I love this country, man. I love this country. And one of the best parts of my fondest memories uh, growing up is getting your block together and blowing stuff up. And, and nobody cared about anything across the street was some computer engineer dude that never came out of his house, him and his wife. I always wondered what went on in there because you never saw them. Uh, next door over here, we had an ex-college uh, 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 basketball coach. He lived across the street, black guy, cool, too, cool dude. Next to him, <clears throat> Vietnam vet that was always uh, in his garage working on cars and guns. Always wore fatigues every single day. And he was over here. Down here, you had somebody that worked uh, manager of a car parts store. Next door, somebody that worked at the Chrysler plant. Over here, a neighbor that I never met, right? Total diversity down the street. The Indian family from India, Indian family with 15 kids. And and never understood. Whatever, right? Fourth of July. All of this. All of us came out of our houses, drank, had fun, and didn't give a crap about anybody's background, what they did, if they went to church on Sunday or didn't go to church on Sunday, whatever, whatever, right? And and suddenly, 
it's everybody's business, right? It's like this red pill triggered world. What happened to, yeah. what happened to that? It was the best part, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> It's crazy to me, man. It's just crazy. Hey, hey Jim, I, I I got a I got a fun. It's not a fun fact. It's actually a sad fact. But you know, we did uh, forty nine episodes of America on Earth, mm-hmm. and five of the sites that we focused on in our episodes have either been vandalized or destroyed. Uh, the Georgia Guidestones are the fifth. And uh, some of them happened like immediately after the episode aired. <clears throat> there was some petroglyphs up in the UP of Michigan. And there was one petroglyph that had the body of a human. I mean, these are Native American, okay? These are indigenous. <clears throat> there was a, the body of a human and the head of a bird, okay? And there's a story, a cosmology that goes along with these petroglyphs and the heavens and their beliefs and all that. And we showed this site. All we said was Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Three months later, I got word that that petroglyph had been destroyed. I felt personally responsible for that. Um, You remember the uh, Narragansett runestone was stolen, right? Yep. (laughs) I mean, it was literally stolen. Uh, that was done by a very wealthy Jack Wagon, whose name I'm not going to mention, but thankfully we got it back. Okay, so that one ended pretty well. Um, then we had the Judicola Stone a few years ago. Some idiot took spray paint and spray painted this beautiful ancient star map, indigenous again. And then he spray painted all the interpretive plaques that were around there. Now that stuff was was actually cleaned off eventually, but... I mean, you know, who does this crap, right? And then you have, this happened a couple of years ago. A guy went to America's Stonehenge. He took a circular saw and he cut in the initials of the logo for QAnon. And this guy we know was a religious nut job because he's been arrested. And one of the things that he did on his Facebook page, now this is, this is, this is brilliant, right? Um, he wrote on there and I'm paraphrasing what he said. I did a little facelift at, uh, America's Stonehenge. Sorry, Scotty Walters with an F U emoji. And that guy was arrested. Um, and now we have the Georgia Guidestones. And so forgive me, Jimmy, if I, I take this a little more personally than maybe others do, because there's a part of me that does feel a little bit responsible and quite frankly, I'm, I'm afraid for some of the other sites that we have, especially the Templars in America sites, because Templars are not cool in the eyes of, of some religious uh, institutions. And so what are you going to do? You're going to destroy everything? Is that going to fix it? And I'm, I'm really genuinely worried. However, um, we are, have already um, contacted certain people and asked them to take appropriate steps to protect their artifacts or their sites. Um, and it's sad commentary that we've gotten to that point. And um, what it boils down to is just intolerance of other people's ideas, of other uh, viewpoints, of other ideologies. And I thought America was open to all of that stuff. And, you know, and here we are. So that I just wanted to explain that because that's part of the reason why I was so emotional on that other interview. Although the guy said when he posted it, he said it blew up and, and a lot of people saw it. But um, I don't know, Jimmy, we always have so much fun on here. And I promise I'm going to be uh, more fun after this. But I just had to get get that off my chest. And yeah, and, you know. and, and and I get all of that. You know, the, the emotions are running high uh, globally. It's not just here in the United States. And, I mean, what do you expect after, you know, everybody's been on lockdown, uh, you know, for, yeah. for a year and a half years yeah. and, and stuff. But here, here's – I'll tell you something. Um, I recently – and I talked to you about this, but I recently went to – Uh, a petroglyph site um, over in Arizona across the border from Laughlin. 
And so um, now I've seen stuff in the past, but as an adult, um, you know, I haven't seen anything like this in, in, in the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, but to go up and to see something like this, it's a life-changing thing. You're looking at something that is potentially, uh, you know, the, the dating is somewhere between uh, before 1,400 years ago. Now, it, it, wait a minute, right? Uh, what? Right? So you're looking at something carved and painted on these canyon walls, these petroglyphs, that are thousands of years old. But this is the trippy thing. It's wide open. Yeah. Anybody, you know, to the public. And, and I thought to myself, how could something like this withstand 2,000 years, you know, storms, weather, earthquakes, everything that, you know, but, but they're still here. That's that's pretty amazing engineering, number yeah. one. Yep. But number two, um, it's also withstood vandals. And, and hear me out. So I, I come back to L.A. and I do the deep dive into these <clears> petroglyphs. <throat> and sure enough, they were vandalized. This kid went up there with a bunch of spray paint and buckets of paint and ended up, you know, doing some prison time over it, um, deservedly so. Yep. Um, and and the reasons for it, that doesn't even matter. And I think he did it for fun, but uh, which is even worse, right? But th- ruining history, right? That's the part about um, all of these uh, sites around the world. Um, that they are open to the public and, and anybody could go and, 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 and damage history and not only for us, but for the future and for other people to enjoy and research and things. And I'm absolutely with you on that. We need to stop and think about, uh, you know, protecting these sites for, for, you know, for the next 5,000 years, not only for today, but forever, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That popped in my head. Hey, you Jim, know? think about think about it like this. Um, you know, and 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 I'll get off this, but you know, clearly three of the five sites that were vandalized or destroyed that I was talking about were were driven by religious intolerance. Okay, let's just leave it at that. Okay, but think about this: these people happen to be Christian in this case not trying to pick on them. These are the facts. What if an indigenous person went to a church and broke the windows, spray painted the walls, started tearing things down? I mean, people would be outraged, right? And that is exactly the same thing when it comes to these petroglyphs, because these petroglyphs, these indigenous petroglyphs, this is their church. This is their Um, This is their history. This is sacred to them, just like your church is sacred to you. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that we may not agree with your religion. You may not agree with their, their cosmology and their belief systems, but it doesn't matter. You, you, you need to respect it. And here's another idea. Here's a novel thought. Maybe take a step back and go, you know what, that's a really cool petroglyph. What does it mean? Why did you carve that? Why don't you ask them, guess what? You might learn something. And the minute that you reach out to them and show an interest in their culture, in their history, in their faith, they might turn around and go, hey, you know what? What's going on in that building over there? What's that all about? And all of a sudden, something really beautiful happens, right? And I, I think that's if we just all respect everybody else's thing that they're doing, and maybe even take time to just learn what they're doing. Imagine what you might, what might happen, right? For one thing, you're going to have new friends, right? And you know what your stuff is all about. That's why. You know, I don't understand how people can stay in the same town their entire lives. Sometimes they don't have opportunities, but I know what 
my guys I went to high school are like. When I go to other countries and other parts of the of, of, of this country, I learn new things. I meet new people that are doing cool shit that I didn't even know about, right? And it just it's just a mindset of ask questions, you know, and try to, um, you know what? I think I've said this on the show before. Bud Grant, you remember the old coach for the Vikings? I do, of course. He's a close friend. I've known him for 40 years. One of his sons was my best friend. And when I was in college, he said to me one time, you never learn anything when you're talking. And you know what I said after that, Jim? Nothing. <laughs> it, it, it's the easiest words to live by. I was told that when I was a kid. Um, but there's too many talkers in this world and nobody that listens. Right. And and I I never forgot that. I, I and here you are on talk radio I, making I, a living out of talking. <laughs> here I am yapping. Here I am yapping, but no, it is it it is so true. And um, I, when it comes to, um, here's, here's the other crazy part. When it comes to lost history, um, and, and, and deep history, we don't have much to go on. You know, I'm talking about writing and, and, and things, uh, it, you know, we have a certain amount of documentation. Most of it's carved into walls, which we've just been talking about, Right. but we don't have a lot of documentation. We don't have a, a, a heavy historical record that goes back you know it's it kind of starts at around year zero there's a little bit before that and a few people could write 1000 bc but you know that was left to educated people but right most of the world didn't write nobody no. read um nobody you wrote read. and you couldn't read um so here's the deal today when uh, we understand that more, we're getting smarter and smarter, and we're trying to figure out the the past and trying to not only decipher and decode it, but understand it, because we have been taught uh, things that have turned into dogma over the years. It's been repeated right. and repeated and repeated, right. and and we that becomes our gospel. Uh, you know, it's not a religious sense, but in that these are the facts of the case, and we're starting to figure out that that's not necessarily true. Right. Uh, right. But with all of that open-mindedness that we seem to have about the past and trying to understand that, um, those same people, and sometimes I fall into this trap, um, want to uh, live in their bubble and say, you need to live your life like me. I don't, you're not allowed to live the life that you are living. Wait a minute. That is the deep past that we have been fighting for, right? The very <laughs> the exact, and, and history is starting to repeat itself. <clears throat> That's it's right. Mind blowing to me. Oh. Now, we were supposed to have matured and, and grown up uh, past all of this, and, and let's live like earthlings, and, 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 and let's figure out what's going on in the world around us. Let's figure out what's going on in space. Let's figure out the deep past. What did the ancients know? Uh, they've left stuff here for us. Let's figure all of that out. That's what life is. Yeah. Not this other stuff. Not this petty arguing and... No. And and speaking, it, it, speaking of that, Jim, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'm going to grab an artifact that you have never seen uh, that I that I purchased at a garage sale about five years ago. And all the guy told me was it came from Minnesota and I'm going to show you this thing. Not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Okay, well, we'll do that after the break. Okay, you want to do that? All right. Yeah, I got to take a break in uh, in, in two minutes. Okay. And, and also, when we come back, you just came back from another trip last week. And yeah. yeah. You, you had told me before the trip, Jimmy, you're not going to believe this one. And my comment <laughs> was, this is what you say to me all year long. I'm just saying, man. Okay, so you know what? All right. So Where I'm going to tell guys... you that story. But first, I'm going to show you an artifact when we come back. Yeah, uh, where did you guys go? Uh, went to New York, upstate New York, 
Okay. And we were, um, we're we've been working on these uh, documents for for a long time. And in the last four years, we have had, I haven't talked about any of this stuff. I haven't published any of this stuff. We've just been working on it. And I'm telling you, Jim, this is the craziest, most amazing story. It's a Templar story, but I'm just telling you, it goes down some really strange roads. And one of those roads is aliens. (laughs) <laughs> everything goes back to the aliens what's going on i just i never even oh, I, it's not man. that i don't like it i never had any it just came to me and it just won't stop but this is crazy and you're gonna like it did you see uh the images today from the james webb telescope i did see a couple of them yes i did oh man that's some mind-blowing stuff isn't it Man, man, man. And uh, the uh, I watched. uh, uh, Okay, well, here's the deal. Um, I have uh, told uh, I think you've may you may have seen me do this at at a conference somewhere, but I used to do this thing where I would I would get a coin like, okay, here's a quarter. I would use a dime. And I would I would go out in, in front of a crowd and I'd say, now take this dime, hold it up at arm's length, and find a blank spot in the night sky where there's no stars. Now look at that dime. You are looking at 150,000 galaxies. Shut up. Right? Now, and so I would oh. do that. Well, what did they announce today? That that image that has thousands of galaxies in it, right? The deep field image from James Webb is the equivalent of taking a grain of sand and holding it at arm's oh, length. No, no. And, and so now I've got to change my presentation, right? <laughs> so now I got to go out with a bag of dirt. You now know? you got to have a sand and yeah, try to yeah, pick yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to blow people's minds with that. And I would have people come up to me later going, no, that's not true. It's true. And I know it is. And it's then true. they they turn around and did the grain of sand at arm's length uh, comparison today. All right, let's take our break. Our guest tonight, the one and only Scott Walter. He's going to go get an artifact. I am. Scott, you, you go do that. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Next, I guess we've got artifacts and aliens. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back. <laughs> Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. 
rivermooncoffee.com. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than in a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray Sobs, and I'm here to tell you about something I really think you're going to like. The Unex Network is a part of a larger group called Unex Media, and one of the things we offer is the quarterly Unex Magazine, which is available both in print and digital formats. This amazing magazine covers all aspects of the unexplained, and makes for a great coffee table periodical that is certain to spark enlightening conversations in your living rooms. We invite you to check out the latest digital issue for free. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash membership and fill out your free membership with your name and email and become a new free member. The new summer issue is now available and the theme is Time Anomalies which includes a feature article written by our managing editor, Lee Spiegel. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash memberships. That's unxnetwork.com forward slash memberships and get your free e-copy of the Unex magazine today. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is here. <laughs> oh, man. What a night. Always, always great, uh, Scott. You know what, though? Um, uh, uh, this show was one thing. <clears throat> if they would have heard our conversations on the phone this week. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, let's get to uh, let's get to artifacts and aliens and and um, and the Templars uh, being from Zeta Reticuli, and I've always suspected that. But uh, let's see this. Let's see this artifact. Okay. So uh, just to quickly tell you, this this was a guy that I had dealt with agates. All those rocks behind me are my part of my agate collection rest are over there but this was a guy that i normally dealt in in agates with but he also was a 
watched the show and knew that, you know, I was into all kinds of things. And he said, you know what? He goes, I've got this strange, I think it's a petroglyph, he said. And I go, a petroglyph? How can you have a petroglyph? Because petroglyphs we see carved on walls and canyons and cliffs. And what, what do you mean you had a petroglyph? He said, well, I, I got this thing out West. I bought it from a guy and this guy dealt in all kinds of stuff. And he said, I, I saw this thing and I bought it and I thought you might be interested. So he sent me a picture. I said, I'm interested. <clears throat> and here it is. Okay. Let me, let me blow you up. Let me, let me blow Scott up here. Can you see that? I can. I, I sent you a picture. I texted you in case yep. you can't see it. Yep. But I mean, I saw this thing and I'm like, I got to have it. Um, so, Jim, what do you see? Tell us what you see. Well, I'm, I'm looking at uh, the picture here. And, okay, this is what I want you to do because I can see it really clearly um, on my phone. Um, lower it down just a little bit and bring it closer so the head, everybody can see the head. Okay, there you go. All right, so um, it's not human. It doesn't. It doesn't look human to me. But I, I, you tell me, Jim, because I'm at a loss. Okay, it could be. Um, all right, take it down, and uh, so you and I can talk. All right. Um, and let me move myself over here. Okay, so. It looks, man, okay, this is where we get into the woo, right? Yeah. It looks um, insectoid a little bit. Well, there's, uh, there's some protrusions coming down. The head has sort of a, it's like, wider at the top. Yeah, I can see that. You know, ant, think ant. Okay. Um. So, but it feels E.T.-ish, alien-ish. Um, uh, dare I say gray. And also, um, when I looked at it here, um, now I would have to see the artifact, um, uh, you in know, person? In, in person, but <clears throat> it almost could be two bodies. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So if you think about what I'm saying here, Scott, let me hold this up. Yeah. Okay. Th this on top, those could be arms. That could be a torso on top of another body, which is really? stranger too. So, or are those some type of antenna coming off of the chin, right? And that's a neck. Or is that a, a, a you know a body with two arms, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it could, it, it, it it's, it's it's dang cool. It, it, it's really cool. There's one thing that I noticed um, is the arms are like this. Yes, uh, I'm trying to, but they're at ninety degrees, right? And what I find interesting about that is in Freemasonry, <clears throat> I'll just give you a little secret. It's not anything you can't read online, but most people don't know this. When we walk about the lodge, you know, if you're going to go over to a place and, you know, you're going to kind of take a beeline, you're going to go around something and you curve, right? When we take turns, they're always at 90 degrees, always. So if I'm going over to the that corner, I have to go like this, then like this, and then like that. And the 90 degree angle, of course, is the square, right, of the compass and square. So the 90 degree angle is something that is very um, um, omnipresent in, uh, in Freemasonry. Now, I'm, I'm not sure how that connects to this thing, but... Clearly, those arms are at 90 degrees. Would you not agree? Yeah, they are. And um, uh, it, 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 I, it looks like, on, on the one hand, the one that's going up, I'm going to take another look here because I've now counted three times. 
There's five fingers. Yeah, but it looks like there was almost a sixth. Yeah, on the far end. Yeah, yeah I see that. Like they, they started a pinky there. One, two, so, three, four, five. Yeah. yeah. And, and six. And then, but over on the other hand, I see the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. But look, it looks like there's either a second thumb or another pinky finger yeah. started. Something so going on it's there. the same mistake on both hands. Um, now I've counted this a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, six fingers. Um, now it, it's on both hands. If it was just on one, do you, do you see that on the hand? That's I do. Yeah, I see it. It's right here and right here. Now yeah. you're, you're not going to, as an artist, you may make the, the mistake on one hand and try to erase it on the rock. But you know how many fingers you have, right? And and got five. You got five. You know, you know what you're carving into the rock. Yeah. And if you're gonna make the mistake on both of both of these of having a half a digit here and a half a digit yeah. here on both hands, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. And the legs are real short relative to the body and the and the head. I mean, if you take the the head to the neck where it meets the shoulders. Yeah. It's almost one and a half times the length of the legs. Now, do I see, okay, maybe it's the angle here. Is there a PP? No, no. I see what you're, I see what you're looking at, but. There is not. It so, kind of looks like a male organ, but it's. I. I. I don't. I. No. It's. That's not there. One that would be pointing north. Right. So that's that's not there. Okay. No, it's not. No, nope, okay. it's not. It's. It's just the. It's the lighting. <laughs> it's just. Well, it's no. What it is is it's a little bit of a discoloration in the rock. Okay. This is All a, right. This is a piece of sandstone, and there. It's sort of it, the color is not totally uniform. Um, it's a little bit blotchy, and I think that's what you're seeing there. This is this is incredible. Okay, so electron microscope. Have you taken a look at this? I have, and it looks to me like it's 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 been pecked. The rock has been pecked, and um, <clears throat> you know it's you can see the back. You can see there's some set. There's a layer of sediment right here or right here, okay. and it goes. Okay. Pamela says she's seen an alien PP and they are very small. Wow. Yeah. Pamela, why would you go there? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, any idea of, of age? Of this? No. Yeah. I mean, I have no context. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what the, the environment the rock was in. I mean, I honestly, Jimmy, I don't ever remember seeing a petroglyph, especially one this well done. I think this is beautiful. I I, I love it, man. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm just, but on a on a cobble like this, I have never seen one like that. It's always on a wall or on a cliff or never on a stone like this. Have you ever seen one like this? No, I, no, have. I have not. I have not. I I I find it remarkable. Um now what about comparison to other cultures and the way that they have represented things? You know, uh, do you see I, anything I, similar? Um well I've seen things similar to this. One of the things that I do see that tells me that it is, you know, it's not some somebody that's making rock art, right? Um, I don't know that a hundred percent. The guy that I bought it from was totally legit and his story seemed legit. Do I know exactly where it came from? I don't, but this, this looks to me like some of the indigenous art petroglyphs that I've seen before where, you know, the body is sort of cylindrical and tapers down the legs being short and um, you know, but I, the arms and the hands, I've never seen that, and I've never seen a head like this. No. I've seen some strange heads before, uh, like the one I described to you that was uh, defaced, had a bird head and a uh, a human body, but um, this is something beyond that, and the detail is actually quite good, you know? Yeah, I um, 
I am going to, uh, I'll probably do it after the break. Um, but I have a, a series of pictures of the petroglyphs that I went to go and see. And there is one figure there in, in the petroglyphs that absolutely 100% blew my mind. And does it look like this? Um, well, let me let me see here. See, I can't post anything in the chat, but I can certainly uh, text uh, something to you. Okay. Um, oh, here it is. Here. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. So, Scott, let me uh, get this going to you, and you tell me what you make of this. Okay, go ahead and check your text. Now I'm going to show it's just so ever I can't post in the chat room but but this is it here and it's huge. Uh, I I'm holding my cell phone up next to it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Wow. You know those legs, you know immediately something came to my mind. And if you want to look this up, uh Look up Abraxas. The Santana album from 1972. Really good. <laughs> really good. No, I love Santana, and I, I know what you're talking about, but that's that's not what I'm talking about. Abraxas is a um, um, been associated with the Knights Templar. And um, let me see. Uh, and you, when you see the legs on this thing, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This looks a lot like an Abraxas. Hang on a sec here. Our Abraxas. Well, um, here it is. Okay. Now, do, do you feel that, especially when you're looking at uh, this stone with this particular figure carved into it, that not only is whoever is taking the time uh, to carve this in and to preserve what they have seen. Yeah. I would assume that. But do you think that most of this is representative of like an origin story where they're trying to tell us, you know, and trying to preserve, right? Like a newspaper. Oh, right, 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 right. Of course, of course. Okay. Yeah, the legs anyway, are more. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I, I mean the legs are going up like that. That's a beautiful petroglyph, and it reminds me of that. Okay, hold on. Somebody just said, "Chop me, please." Okay. Chop me. What does that mean? A uh, uh, block from the chat room. Oh. So uh, that's my word. Chop, chop. Oh, okay. Somebody's somebody just said, "Chop me, please." All right. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. I can, I, I swing that axe. I got my Templar axe. <laughs> <laughs> so so is, is it possible, Jim? That I mean, I I don't think it's possible. I think it's I think it's almost a certainty that a lot of these petroglyphs that are being carved by indigenous people going back thousands of years. Right. And, and let's face it, you and I both know the the indigenous people interacted with the star people, they call them the star people. Um, could these petroglyphs be them? And maybe they are preserving their interactions with them and their images. Yes. Um, and, and their, and their cosmology, the story of their interactions with them and how it affected their lives and maybe improve their lives. I mean, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, but what do you think? I do. Uh, when I was uh, I was with a group of about thirty uh, people uh, the night that we went out and and saw these petroglyphs, and, and we're all looking and we're all talking. And that, as I started to take it all in, I, mm -hmm. I had said aloud, "I said, you know, there's there's a story here. I can I can feel it. There the, there is a story. Those were my words, right." And now it, it was everything was like heading in a, in, in the same direction. Um, the animals, the the things, and the, and and there was uh, uh, depictions of water. There was this being with his arms out, standing above a boat with the water above. He's got his arms out, and above in each above his hands are like this, and in each above, he's holding a cross. 
not a, a religious cross, a, a, a plus sign, right? In each hand, like this, standing above water on this boat, holding these two uh, plus signs. I don't want to say crosses because was, they, they weren't Templar crosses, no, equilateral. They, they were just simple plus signs. I've okay. got All I'll right. send you. And so anyway, you're looking at And then there is this DNA, the double helix. Right. Um, there's that that dude with the helmet that I just showed you. And that is clearly a helmet on his That's head. So it so looks like that, and there was something else that looked like a mitochondria, like a single celled thing. And and there's that, and you're you know, and you're looking, and there's there's like I, I don't know, there's hundreds on the I think it's the most petroglyphs in one site in, in North America. Really? So and there there's this we went into this cave and saw that's where I saw the water one way up high too, like 30 feet in the air. I don't know how that was carved anyway. Um, you know, and you start to look at all of this and you're putting it together. I'm like, there's a story. Yeah. I don't know what they're saying. So when I get back and I do the research, it was their origin story. Ah, where okay. they came from. <clears throat> and, and so I see that, you know, uh, by this archaeologist uh, that wrote up this uh, paper on it. And I was like, that's it. We've got We've got an a astronaut. We've got DNA. We've got single cell stuff. We've got what? We got this. It's like this origin story <clears throat> done wait, a couple. Wait, wait. okay. Oh, wait, J Jimmy. Let me ask you a question because this suddenly occurred to me because there has been some discussion that I know you've heard that humans, um, we we were. What's the best word I can use? We are we are them. We contain some of their DNA. Sure. Okay. So could that be what was being depicted? Yeah, I know. And then see, the thing is, is that when you look at certain elements of nature, now um, where you it's, you know things don't appear in nature, right? And and I'm sorry, Scott, but take a look at that. That's a that's a four foot tall double helix. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like. <laughs> it's this tall, man. Really, this thing next to Ant Dude, uh, the guy with the helmet. Now, you need to take a everybody. You need to take a close look at that. I might oh, have. There he is. Uh, He's on the left. He's on the left, right? Yeah, on the left. <clears throat> and uh, okay. oh, I thought I had a picture of this with a cell phone next to it. But um, again, I've, I've got a bad reflection coming off of my computer. Yeah, but no, that, I can see it now. Yeah, he's yeah. right there on the left. I see that. So, <laughs> what, you know, what, what's going on here ultimately? I don't know. But 2,000 years ago, um, a, a double helix? Where, where, where does this come from? Unless, right? So here's, here's my answer to that in a very brief sense. We have recovered enough meteorites, and a meteorite is a meteor that lands on Earth. It goes from meteor to meteorite, okay? We've uh, uh, recovered enough meteorites and discovered on them amino acids. Amino mm -hmm. acids, yep. the basic fundamental building blocks of you and I. Right on. That's where RNA comes from. RNA that transfers our data into DNA, RNA and DNA. And this is being what? Ferried around space and surviving the entrance of the atmosphere landing here and dropping this chemistry off. So, yes, I would say that DNA is universal. I would say that RNA and those amino acids, the basic building blocks of life, are also being deposited. What, we're the only planet that this happens to? No. Probably not. <laughs> no. no. Okay, you want to see no. another crazy artifact? I do. I, I've got two minutes. How quick can All you right. do it? Oh yeah. Okay, that's tasty. Do you, you see it? 
Yeah, yeah. Do you have you have it there in the studio, right? No, I don't. This guy, I, I've been offered this artifact. Do you see the DNA strand? I do. I see the DNA, and I obviously see the alien eyes. And you've seen these type of artifacts before, right? I have. I've I've, I've held them in my hands. Yeah. Well, I don't have many, but um, I have I have a number of them. And this one intrigues me because of that DNA strand. I'm sorry about the poor image. I'm trying to get it. No, it, it, you can you can clearly see it, Scott. You can okay, there it. it is. Hang on, hang on. I'll I'll, I'll make you bigger. And oh, okay. uh, yeah, there you go, man. That's tasty. That's nice. Yeah, that's pretty. And there's a lot more on the other sides, but uh, that DNA strand in the middle is what has got me excited and. Uh, I don't know why, Jim, but it's just this stuff has been coming to me in in waves. And, um, you know, you asked me about this trip we just took. So on the on the next segment, if you want to hear about it, I will tell you about it. And I have another <laughs> artifact. I love it. I love it. OK, we got to get around to New York. And uh, so we'll do that next after the break. Uh, this is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is with us talking about the secrets of America. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer and UnX Networks. Be right back after this short break. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental God on JimmyChurchRadio.com. <laughs> Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB. BX. Right now, the world couldn't be more chaotic. History shows us what gold does when the world goes crazy. It goes up in value. Right now, we're in unprecedented times. The pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against the hyperinflation that's happening right now. So what can you do to protect yourself? Call my friend Alan Johnson at United Gold Group. He's dedicated to helping people secure their retirement income. He'll help you with gold, with silver, and other precious metals and show you how to set up your own self-directed IRA. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership easy and affordable. There couldn't be a better time, so call now and get a silver American Eagle proof set with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534. Three, four, or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. Reach out to my friend, Alan Johnson. The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. Join us August 5th through the 7th, 2022, at the Drury Conference Center in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, for the launch of the Midwest Conference on the Unknown. There are three interactive days packed with vendors, exhibitors, and nationally recognized researchers presenting on unknown topics like UFO UAP phenomenon, ghosts, and Bigfoot, and Missouri's own Momo. 
the Missouri Monster, Cape Girardeau has long been one of the most sought-out areas for UFO enthusiasts since the 1941 UFO crash. And now is your chance to be a part of the inaugural conference. Visit cape-events.com or follow us on Facebook at Midwest Conference on the Unknown. For more information, X listeners get 30% off by using the promo code XVIP. That's cape-events.com, promo code XVIP. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Jimmy's a hippie. No. <laughs> uh, nothing against hippies. I, I, that, ain't, that ain't me. Oh, uh, no. Uh, I invite anybody. It, it, come, in to hang, come in to hang out with me for one night. Come to a conference. Uh, uh, come into the lounge. Uh, Scott will tell you uh, what 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 that is like to have you know hundreds hundreds of fader knots um, and and gathered and 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 the fun and the coolness uh, that is there. Um, there is no negativity in my world. It, no. it just it doesn't no, exist. No, it's 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 crazy, and and there are a ton of people there. <clears throat> they're they're bright. They're inquisitive. They just want to suck up um, as much information as they can, and they're fun. Um, I I had so much fun uh, <clears throat> at uh, the Conscious Life Expo a couple of years ago. It was uh, it was phenomenal. And yeah, we, was, we've got to get you. We've got to get you back asap. And yeah. uh, well, you know what, Jim? I got to tell you, I was a little bit. A little bit apprehensive because it was not the typical conference, at least I thought, for me to attend. But I got to tell you, I had so much fun. I felt so at home. And I think people really were, uh, you know, they were enjoying what we were talking about. They were into it. And um, I can't say enough good things about it. If I didn't have fun or I didn't think it was a, a, a great event, I'd say nothing. But it was phenomenal so if you yeah. want me back man i'm i'm there just say when oh, man. so much fun and it, it was so cool to see I, look when you have 15 or twenty thousand people yeah uh, together you, you, yeah uh, for real it, it, it's a big group of people and then so you're gonna have uh, a few thousand uh, ufos you're gonna have a few thousand conspiracy you're gonna have a few thousand crystals and and new age type uh, you're gonna have people there that want to find out how to uh, how to meditate you're gonna want somebody that wants to talk about uh, the jfk assassination whatever it is yeah. right and and to see the welcome wagon 
and the red carpet rolled out for you. Uh, that was that was just amazing to see, and you were nothing but smiles. So yeah, <laughs> even, was. even Scott Walter was welcome. Oh my God! So, um, uh, um, this trip to New York. Uh, yeah. Tell us about it. Well, <clears throat> you know, I've been working with. Um, uh, this guy named Don Rue. And if you Google him, I'm sure something will come up. I haven't even done that. I don't know what will come up. But I met Don about uh, in 2006. And long story short is he did some work for our government starting in the early 60s. And his best friend was a guy that uh, worked with him. Um, served in the Korean War. And then after he got out, Don said, hey, I'll help you get a job. And Anyway, uh, in 1971, he bought a document in Rome from a guy who used to, he was a, a Vatican archivist. And it was a document that uh, was a Templar document. <clears throat> anyway, it took a couple of years for Bill to get this thing translated because it was encrypted with Theban and you needed a cipher phrase and all this. He finally figured it out and it talked about a te Templar voyage to America to recover scrolls that contained first century information and other information that had been hidden over in North America, a land they called Antiora, Ontario maybe. And they hid them there. And this guy's mission, Ralph de Sudley, was to go recover those and bring them back. The prize document that he was able to get was a copy of the marriage document of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Now, in all these years since, <clears throat> without going through everything, um, he worked with a woman named Zena Halpern, whose name anybody who watches The Curse of Oak Island will recognize. She actually brought a couple of the maps of the Cremona document to the Curse of Oak Island show, and they've been using it for seasons after seasons. Um, they don't understand what they have because we didn't understand what this stuff was until the last five years when we came to understand that in 1994, Bill Jackson sold that document back to the Vatican. And before you get worried or upset about it, Understand that what we have since figured out is that Bill pulled out the treasure maps, the key letters, key documents, um, parchments, the most important stuff. And he disseminated it to his colleagues in the agency with strict instructions upon their deaths that this material was to go to Don. Don was the youngest guy in the agency, and even Bill wrote a letter in one of the packages that we got a couple of years ago. I think that Don will outlive the rest of us, and that's exactly what happened. He's the, literally the last man standing. <clears throat> so in the last five years, four, since 2017, five years, four of those colleagues have died. Four boxes and packages have shown up. And I'm telling you, when this whole story comes out, you're not going to believe it. But I will tell you this. We also found some documents that Don completely forgot about, where he talked about purchasing <clears throat> from a Vatican archivist in 1979, 80, and 81, three encrypted documents. One of them showed up this year we drove out to new york we've been there this is our third trip we've taken it's taken us a while to decode an 1800 symbol encrypted document we've done it and it tells the story of sacred artifacts that the templars brought over here and hid in north america that were to be used to consecrate the free Templar state. Now, I can't tell you what those artifacts are, but wow. <laughs> and um, anyway, they, have, they were hidden 
in a different place in upstate New York. This encrypted document talks about a guy who was sent on a journey to go recover a document that was part of these of this cache. That document is called the Book of the Wars of the Lord. Now, if you Google that, you will see that there is no extant copy that exists today. Right. It's talked about in the Bible, but there is no extant copy. There is some guy on the internet who says that he's got it and he's going to make it public, but that was published in 2017 and nothing has shown up. So I don't believe that's legit. We have parts of that document. Now, without going into the document, what I will tell you that the end of this encrypted document, what it says is that he is to go to this place and at the hump take only the book of the wars of the Lord. And then it goes on a little bit further. And then it says something really cryptic. It says this book has now passed to or from the hands of men, of man. Well, if this was transferred from, from man, who did they give it to? So that's the first question. But the other thing that I will tell you is that in the snippets of the wars of the Lord that we have, and we may have talked about this before, Jimmy, but I'm going to remind you that one of the things that it talks about is wisdom. I am his goddess. She's referring to the Lord on an equal level, right? And during this passage, she calls down a silver beast that descended from the clouds with wings like a bird that spat out lightning bolts that killed about 20,000 people in this biblical passage. So I think everybody listening, it, it, it's, it's obvious what really, to me, the only logical explanation for what the silver beast was and who probably took possession of this document um, that is not of the world of men. So anyway, <clears throat> the other thing, so the book of the wars of the Lord was taken from this cache, but there's other stuff there. And we have a couple of maps that were, part of this cash. I didn't talk about that before. And I can't show you, but we went up to this place. And we followed the instructions and we found an inscribed stone. What? Okay. Hold it up. Let me see it. I I, I can't. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Scott, 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 Scott. Scott. Hold on. Jim, but, wait now. Hold on. I'm blowing this up. I'm blowing this up. There you go. You got the screen to yourself. Let me see that again. Let me see it. You I can't do it. Why yeah. not? Why not? I, I can't because I don't want. I. I because uh, honestly, okay, seriously, seriously. I mean, I. You know, I, I, the truth is. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I want to understand. I want everybody to understand and understand along with me what you just said. You and Janet just went to upstate New York. You followed a map and following with, with Don, uh, with Don and, 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 and you recovered an, a, an inscribed stone of which you just held up. I know. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. I, no, I, no, what can no. I say? I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. You're being asshole-ish. <laughs> hold on a sec. But, but Scott, Scott, hold, hold it up. Here's Don in the woods. I don't care about Don in the woods. 
I don't care. That could be Jesus in the woods. It doesn't matter to me. I want to see the stone. <laughs> what? Okay. If you if you are going to Scott, you, uh, I, I'm just saying. Okay, Jimmy, I'm going to tell you why I can't show you the stone. I'll tell you why. No. You it, see that rock there? Yeah. It was under that rock. And Scott, okay, what's on the stone that you can't show us? It's a symbol that is on the map. And that symbol has an arrow pointing in a direction. Now, what I'm going to show you is where this thing was pointing and what we saw. Wait a minute. Somebody already sent me a picture of this stone. I'll tell you exactly what's on it. It looks like a compass. Look at me. It's round. And there's a cross, there's a couple of other lines, and the line going, look at me, Scott, and tell me I'm wrong. The line going in this direction, uh, pointing at 7 o'clock, has got a symbol on it. It's, um, you're I, close, right. but, you're I, close I, but that's right. not it. Somebody no. already sent me a picture from, from the site. Nobody's been here. Okay. Somebody already sent me a picture of this. I have it. You want me to send you? You want yeah, me to send you the picture? Yeah, text it to me, and I'll tell you if it's right. I, I saw your face. You know I'm right. What do you think is on the symbol at seven o'clock? If you're holding it, uh, that's not it, that's not symbol. what it is. That's not the symbol. Nice try. That was good. That's good. What do you What do you think it is that the line is going through? <clears throat> well, I I I will tell you that it's a um, it's kind of a compass and square thing. Yeah, it is. It is. But it's, there's no circle. There's no cardinal I, points I, or anything I, like that. But I didn't understand at all what this symbol. Oh, you just got cut off. The CIA is interrupting this broadcast. You like that? Right when we're talking about this, this symbol. Uh, let's see. Who? Choppity Chop Austin. Okay, do I need to go back and find who Austin is? Because I'll chop him. Oh, there you go. You disappeared for about 30 seconds. No, that was your end. I, oh, I'm, it was? Yeah, I'm still going out. Uh-oh, I think Big I think Big Brother's... Big Brother. Me, I got to be careful. Okay, so um, uh, what, do you, what do you think that little thing is on the bottom? Well... I'm not sure what the little thing is on the bottom, but I can tell you that there's there's an arrow. Yeah. And it's, and it's pointing. It is pointing. And yeah, and okay. so the so, arrow, we, so we followed we followed that arrow and we found a cave. Really? It went right. I showed you the cave. I just showed it to you. Yes. And so what we did is we are we stopped. Um we want to dig, but we can't just dig. We have to, there's some things that we have to do. Uh, it has to be done right. And it was pouring rain and it, it was just, and Don, Don fell twice walking in. Um, it was over a mile and um, he didn't get hurt, but he was stiff and he was sore and, uh, but he was determined. He's 79 years old. He's going to be 80 in December. And let me tell you something, he, those are hard miles. He's been shot three times. So what, um, was, in the, what was in the cave? Anything? Um, uh, let's just say that we have to go back and we have work to do. But, but was yes, there yes. anything in the cave? There was. Like what? <laughs> um, let's just say there was the... Um, for what we're looking for, if it's still there, we don't know if it's still there. Um, but if it is still there, um, I mean, all kidding aside, the uh, significance of this is literally biblical. And I'm not kidding. Off the air, we can have a private conversation, Jimmy, but I cannot share publicly what what's there. I just can't. But that's you asked me what we were doing, and I I told you I will now, tell you this: when is we all found this stone, I nearly, I nearly, um, I couldn't believe it, and I recognized immediately that symbol. I have never seen this symbol anywhere before. 
I'd never seen it. Then um, how did you recognize it? Because it was on the map we already had. Oh, I got you. Okay. So if it's just a compass with an arrow, you've already removed it from the ground. The significance of the direction doesn't matter. Why not just show it to me? Well, I I think we're just going to – I'll show it to you privately. I just don't want to do it publicly right now. I just don't. And and the and here's the reason, Jim. It goes back to what happened when we first started this conversation, right? Um, people follow up on this stuff. People are smart and people do stupid things. Georgia Guidestones, America Stonehenge, Judah Culla, UP in Michigan, the Narragansett Stone. Need I say more? It, does all of this fall back into the Cremona document? Yes. The um, the carver of this stone, does it look indigenous or does it look like it was done by a craftsman? A craftsman. Really? Yep. So it's it, it's sharp, it's crisp? Um, it's easy to see. It's very right. easy to see. And it is the same symbol on the map that I, the minute we saw it, I went, oh, that's that. And I knew that it was an arrow. It was a directional indicator because on the map it's go this way and go to this spot. And there was a cave there. <clears throat> um, was the cave big enough to walk in? Not walk in. It's smaller than that. It's more like a rock shelter, but it's good size. I mean, you can, we all got in there out of the rain, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it has uh, a soil bottom. And so you can dig. And, what, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking, was it undisturbed? Yes. For, for this length of time? I don't know how long. We don't know. That's one thing that we don't know because the book of the wars of the Lord, that story uh, actually happened um, in 1898 because it's dated. Right, right. But the stuff that was there, I will tell you this, the stuff, these sacred relics were moved from another location, probably after the seven, uh, after 17... 30. What is this ultimately, and we'll pick this up after the break, but um, why is it that, I mean, this, it, it seems to me, why is it that we, we are led to believe and that people want, other, want us to believe that everything started here in, in 1600, right? That there was nothing, uh, forget about Columbus in 1492 or even the Vikings or even uh, you can go to the Templars and, and the, that, that uh, you know, it's, it's 1600, everything here in, in, in North America is brand new, <laughs> right? That there is no ancient history here. Why is, I, I, I don't get that. What's the big secret? Well, um, it's not a secret. It's actually quite quite obvious what's well, going no, on. I, I understand that it's quite obvious. I'm saying, yeah. what's the big secret? Why, why is it that they want this to be squashed? Well, because uh, if you want me to be perfectly frank, it's, it's Christianity. Roman Christianity has a certain narrative that they want people to believe and to embrace and the Templars don't fit in that narrative. Um, the Vikings are not a threat, but the Templars are. They're a big threat. And unfortunately, um, Jimmy, I'm just going to tell you the truth, man. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bullshit anybody. Um, I, I have been a target. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize it, but the primary funder of the Smithsonian Institution is the Roman Catholic Church. Primary funder of Wikipedia is a Roman Catholic church. Um, they control a big part of the world narrative they have for a long time, and they still do. The reason that um, that big report that was supposed to come out about aliens and what was it, May or June, 
The reason it was a big nothing burger is because the church basically chimed in and said, our followers aren't ready. And I'm just telling you the whole cold, hard truth. If you don't think this is true, Google Kensington Runestone, okay? Here's a fact, Jim. There's nobody walking on the planet today that's done more research on the Kensington Runestone. There's nobody that knows more about that artifact than me. And that's not bragging. It's just a simple fact. Sure. If you go on Wikipedia, you won't see my name. You won't see any of the four books that I've published. But what you will see is a book published by a retired professor of archaeology, um, Dr. Alice Beck Kehoe. She's a friend um, who wrote a book in 2007. That book was called Examining a Research Question Holistically, the Kensington Runestone. Her book was about the book that I wrote with Dick Nielsen, the late Dick Nielsen, that's 574 pages that solved the Kensington Runestone. And she said that in her book. She said, we solved it. The runestone's real, and this the evidence is in our book. That book is cited on Wikipedia, but not the book that she's talking about. You won't look up the Newport Tower. It's a windmill, right? All these uh, out of place artifacts that we have, that I have written about, that we did episodes on, on America on Earth, they're all fake. And they absolutely must be fake, Jim, because if any of them are accepted and the story that I know in my soul is true, and I know it's true now, because we have the documentation. What happens is it triggers a series of dominoes to fall. And those dominoes go to some very incon inconvenient places for the Roman Catholic Church, like the Telpia tomb. So if you want to know the truth, I just told you the truth. They are the ones that are responsible for suppressing this history. They are the ones who are primarily responsible for the genocide that was committed against the indigenous people because they were pagan, right? This is the cold, hard truth, Jim. And I'm not going to be silent anymore. And I'm not going to be politically correct anymore because I've been a target. The true history of this country was a has been a target. The Templars have been a target. And now our founding fathers are a target whether people understand that or not, by misinterpreting what they intended, by reinterpreting the Constitution and passing these ridiculous laws where they say, you're not going to tell me what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to do. And you know what, Jim? I'm sick of it. And so that's why I'm being protective of these artifacts, because I'll tell you what, if what we think might still be there or what the documents tell us might still be there at this location the church is going to want to they're going to want to know and they're going to want that stuff so we're going to be very 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 careful sorry to go on a rant but no, um, fine. that's fine that's fine I'm, I'm absorbing all of it i mean if if everything plays out the way that it reads, and there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle, this is not some simple, straightforward, here's a treasure map, here's a journal, and 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 here you go. No, this is very complex, covering lots. Very complex. And it, it, it covers uh, centuries, if not millennia. So here we are in 2022, and if it appears, I've only got 15 seconds, we'll pick up after the yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. If if it appears um, to be true that coming over here to these shores from Europe was it was a difficult journey, but it was an easy enough journey that they were doing it all the time. They did it all the time. They did it all the time, and it wasn't you know four hundred years later, five hundred years later with Columbus. This was going on for a long time. And, and these ships were coming out of the Mediterranean, out of the Straits of Gibraltar, out of Scotland, out of Wales, out of the UK, 
um, uh, from the north, from the Black Sea, and uh, and heading over in this direction all the time. And and that's that that's it. Those are the facts of the case. And that it, it's just incredible to me, Scott. Let's take our break right okay. here. This, this is Fade to Black. We're going into overtime right now with Scott Walter. I am your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer and Unex Networks, Race Hobbs. Tonight, the secret of America, as only Scott Walter can do it. We'll be right back. More with Scott in overtime after this short break. Stay with us. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Right now, Eden Pier is having their famous BOGO deal on thunderstorm air purifiers. One listener wrote, It makes a huge difference in our cat litter box stink. I just wish I waited for the BOGO deal. I need another one. Well, now's the time. BOGO is back, so when you buy one thunderstorm, you get one free. No matter how many you buy, you buy two, you get two free. You buy five, you get five free. The thunderstorm will completely eliminate any odor, even the worst like pets, cigarette smoke, urine, and cooking. Now is the time to order. Eden Pierce buy one, get one free sale is one week only. With over 265,000 thunderstorms sold and countless five-star reviews, you know it works. People are buying several for around the home and even as gifts. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com and use discount code FADERBOGO. That's FADERBOGO. F-A-D-E-R-B-O-G-O. BOGO is buy one, get one free. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Discount code FADERBOGO. And as always, shipping is free. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden knowledge.tv your own library of information starts today at forbidden knowledge.tv your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse kunx db bx are you ready to read about true paranormal events unx media publishes non-fiction books about ufos ghosts and haunted places time anomalies cryptid creatures and more Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game it's a bolder cup with some bite game changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder but it's still dark with wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich balanced full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after dinner coffee or anywhere in between Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. rivermooncoffee.com Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? 
You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back, Fade to Black. This is one for the books. Our guest tonight, Scott Walter, heading into overtime. Second cup of coffee. <sighs> Scott Walter and uh, Scott going into overtime, and and here's here's the deal. You um, you've been blessed, and. In that you, um, and and, in a weird way, I'm a little peanut butter and jelly uh, about you. We all want to, we all want to go on treasure hunts, right? We've all imagined I've drawn my own treasure maps as a kid and go out and, and do stuff. And, but, but you do this stuff for real and you have been chasing you. You've, you've been around the world. You've been to many continents um uh chasing uh this this story of of all of us right that's ultimately that's what it is but these trails um keep coming back to the new world yeah they keep coming back here and i've often said that uh north america little bit central, a little bit south. But North America has always been the red-headed stepchild, right? Focus on Egypt, deservedly so. Mesopotamia, I get it. Yep. Uh, you know, ancient Greece. Okay, cool, right? You know, I understand it. Stonehenge. I get this. Now, I, I, we've been blessed with Gobekli Tepe, so we've got another focus. But there's, there isn't a, a conversation about Chaco Canyon. We don't hear that. Oh my God, I love that place. It's amazing. You know what I mean? And 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 there's so much to see and discover here. And and all roads and everything seems to be coming back to North America, right? The new world. And and I, I think that this is gonna get blown out of the water at some point, and you're gonna be right at the front of it, man. And I, I firmly believe that. Well, I, you know, you know, you're absolutely right about all roads um, come back to North America. And I, I think I know part of the reason why, um, you know, and again, you know, I, I went on a little bit of a rant there about, you know, Wikipedia and the Smithsonian Institution. But let, let's be honest, what they were doing is they were digging in the Native American mounds and they were trying to sanitize any information that would tell a different story than the narrative that they wanted people to believe. Um, they they screwed up a few times. The Bat Creek Stone is the best one. <clears throat> they thought it was, they didn't understand what they had found and they didn't perceive it as a threat to the narrative, so they published it. But it turns out it was a first century paleo Hebrew inscription that was found buried inside of a Native American mound. So they've been trying to uh, clean up that mess and uh, it's actually kind of pathetic to watch them struggle on it. But <clears throat> the Tucson-led artifacts might be more interesting to me than even the Kensington runestone. I mean, we're talking about 32 artifacts that were found buried in, um, you know, 1,000-year-old colluvium, 1,200-year-old colluvium. And um, they were found in a perfect clean archaeological context and this is another one that the archaeologists are trying to figure out a way to put down but it just won't die and the reason this is because they're real and we've got all kinds of artifacts here and why do we have these things why is it that the hebrews were coming here 
the Vikings were coming here, the Templars were coming here, the Phoenicians before them, probably the Egyptians too. Why were they coming to North America? Well, one of the most important reasons that everybody missed or intentionally overlooked were the indigenous people of this continent. And by the way, they know all about these people that came here, right? They know the whole freaking story. Native Americans have their own secret society. They practice Freemasonry, just like we do. I've been in their sweats. I've heard the stories. I've heard the creation stories. I've heard their rituals. The reason the Templars had so much success in North America is because they bonded with the indigenous people through ritual and intermarriage. And they are both matriarchal at their core ideologically. This is why the Roman church tortured and burned the Templars. You burn people because you're pissed. And the Roman church was pissed off because they came to the conclusion, finally, after 200 years, that the Templars were not Catholic. They just pretended to be Catholic. They embraced a much more ancient faith. And it was the church that borrowed all these old symbols, right? Everybody recycles these symbols. But they understood, the Templars understood them to mean something different. The most important example is the Virgin Mary, right? All she was was a metaphor for the ancient goddess and for Mary Magdalene, who the, the Templar leadership were the bloodline's descendants of. And then the Hebrews before them, the Egyptians before them, the Phoenicians, and so on. Mm -hmm. But the point is this. North America has always been a sanctuary for the persecuted. They knew that if they came over here, they had a similar ideology. They practiced similar rituals. And they treated the indigenous people with respect. And guess what? Isn't it amazing what happens when you treat people with respect? That's not what happened in 1600, right? And again, I'm just going to tell you the cold, hard truth. We've seen the stories of those indigenous schools of the children that were put in those Catholic schools, right? And what are they finding buried behind those schools? You're talking about in Canada. I'm talking about in Canada. Yeah. Guess what? The same thing happened here in America. It happened in my state. They're finding the bodies of dead children who did not want to be converted. And I'm just telling you, Jim, it's time that we had this discussion. Because it goes back to what started this whole conversation tonight, right? Religious intolerance is what destroyed the Georgia Guidestones. And frankly, it's what's destroying this country right now. And our founding fathers would be pissed off. And that's why I feel it's important to speak up. I love to have fun and I don't like to drag, but it's time, Jim, because the other thing that is a cold, hard reality, the aliens are pulling for us. They want us to succeed. They put us here. And we're screwing it up. How is it that um, if uh, if we, if Scott, you know, if you and I were on a starship and we have a group of, you know, explorers with us and we pull up to an alien world and there are signs of life, and and we cruise down and and see what we would consider a primitive culture, a warring culture, killing each other, shooting each other uh, on their planet. And we would back off and go, "Well, that's a group of idiots. We're not going to." What's going on down people. there, right? And 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 then, but but that's what we're doing here, and we would expect. If if we went to um, uh, another world, 
that we would have a world, you know, whatever name you want to call it, planet A, that this was full, uh, this was a planet A civilization that represents their planet, right? We don't represent ourselves as earthlings, right? We, it, that's the crazy part that we haven't woken up and to realize we want to reach out, you know, the James Webb and, and exoplanets and, and trying to find signs of alien life out there. Not to say that it hasn't already been here, but I'm talking about the official side of this, that we would want to be representing earth as earthlings. We all bleed the same color blood, right? That that's what we are. And if we expect that from the universe, then we need to do that ourselves. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's why I, I, these discussions of, of the differences on this, but that, no, that all of that stuff, Ronald Reagan said it best. He did man said it best at the United Nations. What would bring us together? Aliens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what would bring it, put all of our differences aside. You know why? Because I would be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed. How could we have the these issues on this planet when um, uh, all of it? I mean, this this is stuff that we're taught. This is stuff that we're taught. This isn't how it is. This is what we are taught, and 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 fear and hate and and all of this. That, that stuff has got to go away. When the big reveal happens, Scott. You know, some Independence Day moment when some crazy yes. mothership pulls up here. What? Suddenly we're going to represent ourselves as, you know, uh, a hate. Shape uh, up and, place, right? and all of a sudden pretend like we've been, you know, doing this wonderful thing the whole time. Right. Can, think, think about it like this. Um, this is the way it was explained to me. You remember the old Star Trek? I do. Do you remember the Prime Directive? I do, of course. That's basically their position, the alien's position. It, it would have and, to be, and it, it would be our position too. You know, well, I, I understand and, that's science fiction, but 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 is it? But is it? You right. know, Gene Roddenberry. Gene Roddenberry was a thirty-third degree Freemason. And we can have a, a more lengthy discussion about this another time. But, you know, a lot of those early sci-fi programs going back to the late 50s, the 60s and the 70s, Star Trek, um, Outer Limits, um, The Twilight Zone. You remember all those great shows? And, you know, the people that produce those shows in Hollywood, they were briefed by our intelligence, our government intelligence. And basically, um, they were prompted or asked to portray the story in a certain way that, you know, you got to have entertainment, but also to help people understand what, what was really going on. Now, people didn't realize that Star Trek is about as close to real is, is way closer to reality than anybody realizes, um, and, and the bottom line is, is they're going to let us do what we do. They believe in free will. They're pulling for us. They want us to do well. But it's up to us, Jim. And like you said, we should act like we would when we're on our best behavior, right? When we're, you know, at a conference or we're at a wedding or at a, a meeting at work, right? You're on your best behavior. and. It doesn't mean you can't be yourself, but you treat everybody in the meeting with respect, right? You have a good time with everybody at the wedding or whatever, and you're your best self. And we just need to do more of that, right? And and remember, we're all on this same ball living here, and it's not realistic to think that you and I are ever going to go live on another planet. That's not going to happen. So we got to make it work here. And frankly, Jimmy, you and I, as people that have um, a platform, there's a responsibility that we have to try to do everything we can to to help 
the situation get better. And I think tonight we've done that. And I think every time you and I get together, we do make things a little bit better. It's fun. It's educational. And I think, you know, we make people think. And and that's that's our job, I think. That is, that is, and uh, to stir conversation, and and I, I love that part of it. Uh, but I want to go back to your point uh, about uh, the CIA. You can go to CIA.gov, and you can search their entertainment division, and it's right there. And how they how they work with and liaison with with Hollywood. And and yeah. film and television production, right? I mean, to this day, to, to this day, day. It, it, it's, it's not back, It's not just back then. It's right now. It, it's right now, and right. you can go um, and research this. It's uh, a lot of it is very very public. When a lot of these science fiction films, films in general, but science fiction, uh, uh, war movies, things like that, all of those scripts went to the CIA for approval. And 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 got rewrites and and pages removed and pages added by the CIA, and, and it's uh, it's an interesting part of uh, not only the CIA but the way that our government deals with things. And today, but it's been going on uh, uh, throughout. Started in the 1950s. CIA was formed in 1947. I'm not too sure when the uh, entertainment division was uh, done, but th- probably many, not long after that. No, not probably. long after that, because many screenwriters and and studios talk about uh, uh, the submissions of of their scripts and screenplays uh, going back to the CIA in the 1950s, and there were plenty of science fiction films uh, that had their plots changed and things omitted and things added. By the CIA, this is part of the historical record. Um, it's very easy to research. And um, I remember, um, uh, this is about three years ago, four years ago, one day I just did a Google search. Popped right up. I'm read- I'm on CIA.gov, man. I'm reading the page. And right there, would you like to work here? Click. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jim, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. Um, I don't know if I ever told you this before. You know, my dad was a pilot for Northwest Airlines. Mm. And um, he flew from 1960 to 1983. And um, I, you know, I hadn't talked about this for a long time, but I, I, I sold a guy in agate today. And um, he, he, he said he had read one of my books and he told me a story about how his dad died tragically. And he said, you and I have that in common. And my dad did die tragically when he and I were scuba diving together back in 1983. And I'm not going to go into the story, but um, after he died, there were two interesting things that happened. One was the day after he died, when I went to collect his body, it was in Australia. It was a bad deal. They had cut off this ring that was on his finger. And I I knew the the ring he always wore it, but I never looked at it, right? I was a 22-year-old kid at the time, and, you know, I didn't care about my dad's ring. But I looked at it for the first time, and there was a sword on it, a five-pointed star. When I got home, when the time was right, I said, Mom, what, what is this? She said, oh, your dad was a Shriner. I said, hmm. what's a Shriner? She always oh, a Freemason. And I said, what's a Freemason? And he never said a word about it. But anyway, uh, later on, a few weeks later, I had a meeting with the chief pilot at, at Northwest Island, uh, Northwest Airlines at the time. His name was Don Naira. And he uh, and I've never talked about this publicly, but I, I don't care anymore. He said to me, uh, Scott, I'm going to tell you a few things about your father. But um, if anybody asks you about it, I'll deny it. And Don's been dead for a long time now. But anyway, he said, your father was in the CIA. And I said, I'm not surprised because he was doing some things in the last few years of his life that were (laughs) unusual, shall we say. Have you ever heard of the movie American Made starring Tom Cruise? Yep. That's my dad. What? Yeah. So, wait a minute. 
Not that that's not that guy. That story was based on a true story. But that guy was recruited by the CIA to haul weapons to Central right. America, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he got involved in hauling drugs back and yep. you know ended up going in the ditch. But dad was was flying jets to Central America. Dad was a commercial pilot, but he was and he probably did other things I don't know about the other things, but, um, but he confirmed that that's what he was doing. And, um, to this day, I don't think my dad's death was an accident, but in any case, he died the exact same year as the character in that movie was killed too. Wow. Watch, watch it again. Oh, you've seen it. So you know what it's like. Yeah. 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 I've seen the movie. Um, well, my dad was in the army band and it, I don't think he, uh, uh, I don't think there was a secret life of Walter Mitty going on. With him. <laughs> well, anyway, when you said CIA, anybody can can be in the CIA. I I never thought about it until Don told me that, and then I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, because Dad was in the Strategic Air Command before he was a commercial pilot. They were the top guns of their day, and and he was um, he was something, man. He was. You know, I've I've done a lot of crazy stuff in my life, but I'll tell you what, he was crazier than me. That's right. That's where I got it. That's for sure. But he was a great guy, and I miss him. I think about him every day. You know, I I often wonder. I, I we've got about ninety seconds left um, in this crazy world that I'm in, and 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 some of the people that that I meet, I meet people all the time. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, who. Who who is who is who is playing the game, right? Is it, it, it and and if you, I, if they're doing their job correctly, you'll never know, right? You'll never ever 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 know, right? And that's that's the, that's the crazy part. That's why I just go with squinty eyes like this. <laughs> that everybody, you know, okay, you know, and and. <laughs> Um, when, if it was disclosed to me, I'd be like you, oh, I thought it was him, right? (laughs) Not you, you really, I'm serious. I mean, it would be the last person that you would think. Well, Uh, yeah. And well, that's, that's how they can be the most effective is the people that you just, you just would never think, you know, and I, I mean, I guess when I think about it, I, I kind of think dad would have been probably one of the first guys, you know, um, but it never crossed my mind. I, it never occurred to me till. Uh, Isn't till that I, interesting? Isn't yeah. that interesting? Yeah. Well, um, Scott, uh, I've got 30 seconds. When, when are we going to do the big reveal? Well, I mean, it's, I'm it's, not going to wait. I'm not going to wait till 2023. Just tell <laughs> me. This. Which thing do you want me to reveal? I, I'm not sure what you want. We got we got to get this thing resolved. You've been working on this now for ten I years. I know. No and, longer than that. Longer than yeah, that. Longer than that. Well, I've known you for ten. Yeah. Um, and we've been talking about this, and it's it. I'm absolutely uh, intrigued. Yeah. Um, I know some things that you know, you know that you've told me that it, it will yeah. never be on the air until you're ready, but. But come on, man. I know. I know. Well, you know what? I got to tell you, Jim, honestly, I think we're just about uh, we're, we're just about as far as we can take it on our own. Um, but we're working on some um, we're working on some things. And if they if they work out, you're going to be hearing about this in a big way soon. But it's a big project. And like, you, you know, it's immensely complicated. It's the most difficult project I have ever worked on. But. I also understand the importance of it, um, and and it will have a lot, lot to um, a lot to say about what's happening in the world today, and it'll be something that I think will change a lot of thinking. So we we have to be really careful how we do this. It's not so much, you know, what the information is that you reveal, but how you reveal it is just as important. Man, keep doing what you're doing, Scott. I'll give you a call tomorrow. We'll talk over the weekend and, right. and uh, you can send me a picture. Okay. Uh, uh, I trust you. I'll send you a picture and, and I'll put, I'll give you a little more context, but you got to swear to secrecy. Scott, 
I'm <laughs> full of Scott Walter secrets. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, you, Jim, for um, allowing me to be on your show. Thank you for allowing me to be the uh, loose cannon that I can be. And uh, I, I love you, man. Thank you so much for having me. I love me. you back, Scott. Don't ever change, my man. <laughs> okay. Scott Walter. And uh, give my best to Janet. You have a good yep. night. I'll talk to All you. All right. Um, all of Scott's links are right there in the description box below. We have it throughout social media. Everything is right in front of you. And uh, it, it's easy. HookedX.com. Scott Walter Answers. Blogspot. Dot com. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Paul, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kobar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, Kelly Sullivan Walden, The Secrets of Dreams. Until tomorrow night, I want everybody to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.